Hello, welcome to CarCast. Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea here with Bill Goldberg. How are you? Tired and old, man. You know, <laughs> Tired <old>. and old? <laughs> yeah, every day. Every day. Uh, the days get shorter and the list gets longer. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, but behind been... me, I got, a, I got a different car on the lift every time we got the freaking show now, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's fun, dude. We're having fun. Yeah, I know you had the crew out there when you're filming. You, it's, you, you try to jam as much into the limited amount of time while your crew is there, and then they get to go back, and then they edit and they put it together. So it's, it's kind of like filming a a season of TV where you're like, well, let's get it all done, and then, and then they're gone now because you can't pay them to just be there on call, you know, week after well, week after week. The the cool thing is, is that I'm learning that as we've talked about, the more organic it is, the better it's received on that medium. Right. And so when they're not here, I got a GoPro running a lot of the time. Jackson and I work a lot of the time into the wee hours of the flipping morning. Unfortunately, look at me. We did it last night. Um, so uh, that coupled with, you know, when they're out here for a day, they're here from nine in the morning to six and we get two episodes shot. Um, we, I mean, you traditionally do the open, you do the close and you do as much in between as much meat as possible in between. Yeah. You know, with the dynamic shots that they can do and that you can't do. So, yeah, I mean, it look pretty stupid flying a drone and trying to drive a car, you know? So, I mean, it's, to be able to, to utilize them for that short period of time is, is key for sure. Well, you know, <clears throat> I went on after we did the podcast last week. Um, you were talking about getting the Demon 170 and getting the custom green uh, color. And then this week you posted the, the video on your YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, definitely different green than the F8 green, a darker, I don't know, more of a forest kind of green to it but that's a sharp looking car that thing's you cool have to, thank you and you but you have to see it to do it justice i can't yeah. even describe it i mean i can show you the swatch you know right up close to the camera yeah you can see the car but it you, you can't really tell it's so much different than the f8 um but yet it's as distinctive and as badass i believe because the f8 is my favorite favorite color out of the whole lot right yeah um but it's so much different, but so much the same. It's kind of the way, the best way I can describe it is it's a modern day interpretation of uh, what the military would use for camo color. Right, right. And what does Dodge call the color? Uh, green machine. Green machine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. I mean, I obviously there was a part of me that went, oh, I love F.A. Green. I, I could get the F.A. Green. But I was in the longest yard and we were the main machine. And yeah, I was just thinking that too. You guys were the main machine. Uh, and it just, like, you didn't pick the there. name, right? It just worked out that way. And I just thought it was funny because I saw the video and I was like, did he say mean machine or green machine? I go, I think he said green machine. I go, well, that's funny because I just watched the longest yard like two weeks ago on TV. And you guys were in it. And I just remember the, the team being mean machine. So anyway, you're right. I thought it was kind of fun. No, it's a good color. Funny. It, it, thank you. I mean, it, it, it fell into place. I mean, it's that close to the F8. It's a one on one. I've never seen it before. And oh, it rhymes with me machine. So I mean, it was, it was pretty easy. To, it shows me. Let's just put it that way. And I, I mean, it was, it, it, it's really cool. Next, ne I'm not going to say next week, but an, in an upcoming episode, and I'm going to film it uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to go to my neighbors who's just, who just picked up his 170. And, uh, not only we're we going to compare and contrast, but uh, we're going to run him. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's a terrific neighbor to have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as, as a car guy, he's got one of the most eclectic ecle uh, uh, collections I have ever seen in my life. From a, you know, I, I mentioned it to you from a four thousand and a two thousand mile Countach and a Testarossa to a two thousand mile or two thousand horsepower. You know, Copo Yanko, yeah, uh, or, or Copo uh, drag car. You know, yeah, yeah, drag car. So 
you got to um, do an episode on your uh channel touring his garage you'd see if he that's can what i'm doing it. yeah yeah yeah, be, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna, yeah we're gonna i'm gonna take the 170 i'm gonna drive it over there because it's he's four miles down the road yeah and we're gonna meet his 170 and then have him give us a tour of the garage and so what, what color it, is his 170 be, do you know i have no idea yeah i was just at the dealership yesterday um and i was talking to him and they said he had picked it up yesterday okay. so uh, we're gonna we're gonna go check it out. He's he's the one that we're gonna we're gonna uh, run the uh, the rat the uh, uh, TRX versus the diesel. Uh, yeah, he's uh, got the modified. That I told yeah, you about. yeah, yeah, the modified truck. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the uh, the one seventy. Now that you've got just a little bit of seat time involved. What what's the difference? How do you feel the differences between the 2018 car and the 170? Although you drove it home on E85, so you're going pretty full full power on that deal. Well, no, I wasn't because first of all, I just got it. Second of all, I was not joking. It was freaking raining. Yeah, and I mean, you couldn't see it pelting the car. It wasn't, but it was enough to where it's worse than a a. a not a deluge, right? Yeah. But it's just enough to get the oil surfacing on the fucking concrete, pardon yeah. my friends, right? So it's it's right there on the line. And you got drag radials all the way around, like the 18, but they're different. You know, the, the slots in the Mickey Thompsons uh provide so much more surface area for the for the tire itself than the large slots in the Nitto tires. So you yeah. got more travel for the rain to go through, right? And 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 less tire on the ground, so you got less area to slip. And you got man, it was and you got two hundred more horsepower, arguably. Yeah. And, and so, but I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know technically what they did tra uh, uh, suspension wise. I don't know what. I truly don't know what the comparison is. But to me, it felt like for the first time driving back. It was more in my mind like a super stock uh, uh, suspension would be as a mid road between the Hellcat Red Eye and the Demon, you know. Okay. Yeah. As far as as far as drivability is concerned, I mean, I don't think it's set up. I mean, yeah, it's set up as a sub nine second car, the first sub nine second car, but it 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 handles a little bit better than the original 18 uh, as yeah. a straight line car. Yeah, but, okay. You know, that's all I can say. And I don't know technically how much different the suspension is, but it just, it did feel a little, even in the rain, it felt better. Yeah. And it sure as hell hooks up differently. And I don't know if the tires make that much of a difference, but it squats down and it, it, it sits and it grabs so much differently than that 18 did. So that's the biggest difference that I saw in 44 miles of driving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looked cool. Um, I saw that it was raining. It was a little unfortunate that it was, uh, it was raining. I'm sure Jackson was a little nervous driving the other car home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we didn't get a close up of his, of his butt because yeah, he was pretty tired. <laughs> he was pretty tired. I'm sure he was. Um, but it provided, I, uh, you know, provided a great, a, a, you know, a great video. Um, we didn't, unfortunately, on the way back, three quarters of the video was not usable. Uh, something happened to the GoPro. So we couldn't see the dueling back and forth and the, the cool driving shots. But it, we'll, we'll have a lot of that upcoming, man. Uh, yeah. There's the going to be plenty, plenty different, more. different, but they look exactly the same going down the road. It's a, it, 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 it provides for a really cool vision. Um. So the, the cyber truck that was on bring a trailer that sold. And, uh, just wanted to say thanks to everyone that participated in that, that auction did, uh, that auction had 5,486 watchers and 113,623 views. Does and, that and, surprise? Does that surprise? And, and it just, it's not the record for, for bring a trailer, but it's very, very high up there. 
758 comments. And I know a lot of the commenters were on there going, let's get this to a thousand. And people were just commenting like the last couple of hours, there must've been 150 comments or something like that. So it was fun to participate. Uh, uh, opinions and comments across the gamut. People love the truck. People hate the truck. People don't understand. People do understand, blah, blah, blah. But um, uh, anyway, it, it was fun. It sold. Um, it, uh, Randy from Bring a Trailer jumped in as well. The owner of Bring a Trailer, the, one of the co-founders, he he jumped in on there as well as, as Bring a Trailer, but he signed it. You know, he commented as Bring a Trailer and he signed it, Randy. So you, you, people know that he was there and we, he was excited to see all the the comments and the kind of the commotion that was going on. So it was a fun auction to, to do. It wasn't my truck. I, people still think it was, it wasn't my truck. Uh, a, a friend who's never done this before got it, was thinking about selling it. I said, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can give you the first one listed on bring a trailer. We had to go to them. We had discussions about it and we did, and it was fun and that's it. And it's done. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's getting shipped overseas. Uh, I, I spoke to the, to the buyer and I don't want to give too much away. I want to respect his privacy, but this is going to, uh, another country for sure. <laughs> uh, so it's takes, it's been a little more complicated on closing this deal, but, uh, we're getting it done. And you were mentioning wheels and tires. You were mentioning Nitto. So on the, the Ford lightning, I got a new set of wheels for it. We're trying to, you know, first of all, you guys listen to the podcast that we do with Alistair uh, from Edmonds. We've been talking recently quite a bit about uh, the values of cars dropping during the pandemic. You know, cars were premium because there was supply chain and people were getting markups and now that's reversed and prices have dropped on EVs and, you know, Tesla for the first time is running ads now because they kind of missed their, their, their goal on vehicles delivered. They've never spent money on ads. Uh, uh, Tesla uh, is. Um, Fisker is unfortunately on the verge of bankruptcy. Valuations have dropped. So as a fun little gift to me, Alistair was like, hey, let's type your truck into CarMax and see what it's worth. And he's like, it's $50,000. I like, go, oh, great, it's half. It's half what I paid. So needless to say, I I have to keep it. I'm stuck with keeping it. I just don't have it in me to to try to sell it at any point. I like the truck and I'm driving it, but he added that little cherry on top of the cake. I'm going, you lost half your value. So now I've decided to do what I want with the truck and modify it and do whatever. <laughs> By the way, it's not just EVs. I know you're laughing. You're laughing at me, but it's not just the EV market. I apologize. Like, this is uncontrollable. Like, like, like cars, it's cars anyway. across the board are are there. But <laughs> and, and, and look, and the one thing you did bring up is like if with interest rates being high and car valuations being low, if you are in the market for a car, you You're will be able to. Screwed. You know, you'll be able to find a good deal if you can well, pay cash and get something new, get something well, used. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. But if right? you want to finance, no, it's it's not well, advisable. <laughs> dude, I was at the dealership yesterday, and it was it was the biggest freaking violin I've heard in a long time from yeah. dealers, and and one of the best dealers around. And they are, and it's it's not they they're not they're not looking up for tomorrow by any stretch. Yeah. I mean, obviously. There's things always going on that we don't know about, but it didn't for, for seem sure. as if the temperature was very hot. It was 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 now I I I really can't speak on behalf of the dealers or what they're going through, how they navigate those waters. But from the outside looking in as a consumer, I I mean I can't say there's like a ton of sympathy because it seemed like prices were high and markups were across the board, and we don't we have very strong opinions about markups and, but now there's major cuts and lack of sales. But look, as we said, like it the value, like... Go, go ahead. the value of my truck is half what it costs. And a new lightning, for example, is like 15,000 off sticker. Fiskers are given away for like 40% off, off the sticker price. And there's been discounts across the board, but yes, the Ford lightning, which I do enjoy driving. It's a cool truck. 
and I'm using this as an example because I have one, but absolutely the smart thing would be like, do you go buy a brand new one? Sure, there's 15,000 off sticker. Or do you buy one a year old, you get it for like 50 or 60 grand, you're getting it for 40% less, you know, and if you can pay no, cash, you don't you buy don't have one to finance it. Yeah. You just or, don't buy one at all. Right. I, but my example is is the lightning, but I mean vehicles in general. If you could buy something a year or two old, get it for half the cost. And if you're able to pay cash and not have to finance, you're going to get a really, you could potentially get a very, very good deal on the car. Absolutely. And, and obviously that doesn't work for, for most people, right? Because sometimes you have to lease or if you're doing a write-off or you have to finance and you need a car. I'm just saying there are some deals out there where we are right now in that market, there are some deals or you get screwed. Like I did and <laughs> Edmonds lost. I don't know. I think they said they paid 69, 68 or 69,000 for their Fisker. And the current like CarMax valuation is 27, 28,000, maybe 25,000. Now it's tough. And, and that, that company is going to be tough to survive. They don't, they said they don't have enough money to survive this year they're going to need an investment or they're going to need a partnership or or something with you know like there was talks about nissan maybe toyota uh buying them or merging or or helping or doing something and and i don't without a deal like that they won't survive so the 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 risk on fisker is yeah you can go buy one right now and get a good deal on it but you don't know if there's going to be any support for that vehicle in the future. And it's not like you can just pop the hood and fiddle around or even scrap it for parts because there's just not a lot. It's so software based and so proprietary. There's just not a lot you can do. Even a modern day car. Now we have so many electronics and stuff in it, but a modern day gas engine car, chances are we could take that engine out and, you know, spend a couple of bucks and do like a custom, you know, EFI system and get it to work in some SEMA build or hot rod or whatever, right? Like we've seen it, people are pulling Aston Martin engines and Ferrari and BMW and putting them into different hot rods and they get it to work. Unless you're just gonna scrap that thing with four electric motors and put it into something else, it's just not It's just not as easy. It's not as feasible to, to part it out in 10 years from now or five years from now if you can't get parts. So, And it's a shame because we have, we, they have an endearing spot in our heart. I, I thought I like Henrik Fisker. I think he's a charming guy to interview. Um, and no, I'm talking about the car itself. We, yeah, I've, and the I've car. Seen, yeah. We've both seen that car at HRE, right? And appreciate the aesthetics of that car more so than so many of, of the others in that space that they are one that stick out in the niche, right? Not only that, but the, the close proximity. we have seen them for years and years. Yeah, yeah. And years. So, and, and you're thinking of the Fisker Karma, the one he did before, which is the sedan. The Fisker SUV, the Fisker Ocean is the one now that has, that is having the issues. But the Fisker Karma was another example of pe people buying them, but that did have a little gas engine as an onboard generator, like the new Ram Charger does. Uh, but yeah, Fisker's tried this thing a few times, um, not necessarily been the the success story that he wanted um but uh but the fisker ocean also still has tons of reservations and he took deposits on those reservations and now people are canceling those reservations and a lot of those deposits not a hundred percent but a lot of them were mm -hmm. refundable so now the company has to refund somewhere around nine million dollars the rumor is i think business insider said there's something like forty thousand canceled registration uh, uh reservations so far so anyway that's just a little follow-up on uh on from the last episode we did with uh that alistair and i did on fisker but um uh, anyway the point being i was getting into this this tire thing and and keeping the lightning truck and i'll have a video out soon but i i did wheels and tires on the truck and i tried to find tires that i wanted in the factory size the 275 50 22s and I couldn't find anything that I wanted. So I, I ended up going to an, uh, the Nitto NT 420 uh, V, I think, to a 305 45 22. So roughly the overall same overall diameter. So it shouldn't change any of the calibrations on the vehicle, but it is a little bit wider. Um, 
so I don't know. I'll probably lose a little bit of range or something because I've got a, a more rubber on the road and uh, and a little bit stickier tire. But maybe the performance will increase. Um, but it looks pretty cool. It has a much more aggressive tread on it than than the sort of the all weather EV tire that was on it. Uh, but I'm gonna take it over to uh, to Ibach, and I think in like two weeks I'm gonna go to Ibach facility and we're gonna lower it. And they've been working on a kit there that I I think it's on the website. I don't think it's been delivered yet, but I'm gonna go. I wonder if lowering it will will uh, compensate for the wider tires in your gas mileage. That's interesting. You brought that up. So two thoughts were one was if I reduce the amount of weight, like the wheel and tire package, would that make a difference? And no, then plus. lowering wow. it. And uh, now. Because I went to a bigger tire, which was heavier, but I went to a lighter wheel mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll, it's all in the YouTube video I'm gonna post, but I'll give it away here. And if I went with the factory tire size on these wheels, I'd be about five pounds lighter per corner, um, five to six pounds. Now, mm -hmm. because I went to the larger tire, I still ended up at almost a pound lighter per corner. So probably not enough to make a difference. Four pounds lighter isn't going to make a difference. Now it's, it's a pound per rolling mass. So it's more significant than if I just lost four pounds <laughs> myself and they got it, it wouldn't make a difference. So I think it's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, but with the factory tire size, if you took 20, you know, maybe 24 pounds off of the rolling mass, I don't know but lowering it. So I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there is uh, uh, a YouTube video, these guys called I One Tesla, and they took the Cybertruck to uh, the wind tunnel, AT wind tunnel in Mooresville, um, uh, North Carolina, where they do a lot. They're like right next door to the NASCAR, to a NASCAR facility. They do a lot of the wind tunnel testing. Everything in Mooresville is NASCAR. Yeah, right. And they, <laughs> so they brought the Cybertruck in there and they did wind tunnel testing to measure the drag coefficient. And um, for them, they were like, Tesla claimed a 0 0.34. They got like a 0 0.38. And the guy explained that there was enough differences in in wind tunnels that it's pretty much close enough to what tesla was claiming they were actually very impressed with what it did um but to your point lowering it so in the video which is more interesting because you get to learn about the wind tunnel and get to see in it and how it works and talk to the engineers behind it and they built this thing themselves uh, so the science behind it, and they tried it with the tonneau open, the tonneau closed, the tailgate up, tailgate down, and the vehicle lifted in its higher modes and then lowered. And there was a difference lowering it in, in its lowest mode and its highway mode versus its higher mode does make a difference uh, overall in the drag coefficient. So lowering the vehicle around town, it's not going to make a difference. Like, I don't think there's going to be any difference in my range doing my three, four mile commute, right? Because the weight's not going to make that much of a difference. It's not, going to, it's not going to matter if you're going under 20 miles an hour. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's not going to make a difference. Getting up on the highway, what it happens to the total range. And you're right. I am curious to see if the added friction from the tires is offset by maybe lowering the truck and improving the aerodynamics a little bit. Um, and... And and I am curious, like as I know, there's a lot of debate on tonneau cover versus no tonneau cover, tailgate open versus tailgate closed. And Ford even put up a video of an F-150 a while ago, and and they wind tunnel tested, and he gave advice on on a truck. Um, and then at the end of the video, he said, "But if you put a tonneau cover on it, you will improve the overall aerodynamics." So. From that engineer's point of view, and I know there's still a lot of debate online, he's saying it will help. Uh, I don't know. When they did the Tesla, by the way, tonneau cover closed was the most efficient. Tonneau cover open, least efficient. But if you put the tailgate down and the tonneau cover, cover open, it worked better, but not as, as well as tailgate closed, tonneau closed. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. I saw I saw a uh, I saw an eighteen wheeler of Tesla Cyber Trucks pass Bernie the other day. Where yeah. I lived. and I just it, to me it just looked like the best moving target range I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw videos too. Someone's like, is it bulletproof? And the girl shot the thing. I was like, okay, you shot it and it didn't go through the door, but now you got 19 dents in your door. Like, what are you going to do? And I guess the, the, the gimmick now is like you drive around with these, with these dents in the door and you go, what happened? You go, well, I shot it. I wanted to prove that it was on. I don't know. The it's not gimmick, the gimmick now. Yeah. That's the whole thing. I mean, they, yeah. I, I, a lot of people do some wacky stuff for content creation for YouTube. Dude, I went whatever. to Demolition Ranch again last week. I love those guys to death. And they got yeah. they got a following that's unrivaled online, dude. And uh, it was a, it was the, the, the first the first event they had. Uh, they have this place called Desperado Ranch. So he's blossomed Demolition Ranch into like a uh, a place where people can come and enjoy themselves for a certain amount of money. Uh, I.e. the uh, the eclipse next week. He's renting out spots on his land. But it was a private uh, uh, event with YouTubers, all influencers, right? So the first event was total chaos. Last week was the second event. And the only reason I'm alluding to it, wasting your time, is that they, right at the end of the event, a... Tesla pulled up, not a cyber drone, but a, uh, I guess it was just a, I don't even know, a four-door Tesla. And uh, it had a, a, a turret with a 50 caliber machine gun. <laughs> I thought that was, yeah. That was yeah. <laughs> does that even out or I didn't, I didn't get that part. That's interesting how they, I gotta have to see how they got it mounted up there oh trust me man it was professionally done it was like, yeah i mean i guess i'd rather do that because it seems removable than shoot the side of my cyber truck and put a bunch of holes in it if i owned a cyber truck <laughs> i don't know that's kind of a toss-up too but i can't rag on the cyber truck too much because uh gage's quarterback would just receive the first one in colorado shadur uh sanders uh, yeah Dion's son Deion Sanders' son <laughs> is the quarterback of that team. <laughs> you didn't yeah. know that? All right. No, I didn't. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. 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 He's the quarterback, and he took delivery of the first cyber truck in Colorado a couple days ago. So that's what Gage has got to compete with. He's just pulling up in, in his lonely old Bronco. Yeah, but that Bronco is cool. I know. Just joking. yeah, yeah, I like the Bronco, but you're right. Yeah, he's got to slum it in a new Bronco while it's somebody uh, else has got a new hundred thousand dollar tire cyber truck. <laughs> oh, he's got that in Bugatti. Uh, he's got just he's got everything. So yeah. yeah, valuation of over five million dollars for his NIL alone in college. So that's how the game's changed. Yeah, back in the day, it was illegal to get paid. Now it's just part of the business. So. Yeah, it's business. There you go. Somebody was making money off of it anyway, right? Why not? Hey, man, yeah, more power to him. More power to him. Hell, Gage is getting stuff already, so it's it's cool. It's a it's a cool process. My son, who's not eighteen years old yet, it needs an agent. Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, all right. So, uh, what else is going on? Uh, the Lincoln Nautilus. This is the new uh, Lincoln SUV. Uh, a two row SUV that um, redesigned uh, lots of new tech. And I wasn't able to go down to the debut. Uh, so Lincoln uh, being as great as they are reached out and said, sorry, you couldn't make it. Would you like to drive one? Here you go. And they scheduled it very quickly. Um, it's, it's cool. It's interesting. And they've, they've definitely made some, some changes and upgrades to it. The first thing that you'll want to see is if you can see that is uh, trying to share the screen here. Inside, there's this massive screen that goes all the way across uh, the dash. And then you have a smaller, like 12, I think 12.1 inch screen, touch screen. 
but along the dash, it's kind of an interesting setup because you have a screen up there, it lowers the dash, like the dash pad is lower. So when you get into it, you feel like you're sitting very high uh, when you first get into it. And after a few days, you kind of get used to it. Um, and then that screen going all the way across and it's customizable. You can swap out different, the different sections of it. Um, what gets displayed on the different sections turns out to be really kind of cool. You've got the gauges in front of you, speedo and stuff, and then you can have maps or whatever. Uh, I set it up with maps and weather and the infotainment stuff. Um, but one of the features that I liked was it has Android Auto wireless and CarPlay wireless. And when it connects to your phone, if you use maps on your phone, like Apple Maps, it puts it up on the big wide screen instead of just on the touchscreen in front of you. So one of the issues people that use CarPlay, as you guys would know, is when you use CarPlay, you pretty much your, your infotainment radio functions disappear because now you're in CarPlay. So you can't change radio stations. You can with steering wheel controls, but you can't touch the screen to change radio stations and stuff or climate control if it's on the touch screen while the map is up there. Well, in the Lincoln, you can, because now you can put on your Apple Maps, have it go onto the big wide screen, show you the maps, and then you can take your small screen and actually start controlling the infotainment system and your massage seats and change radio stations and, and all that stuff. Uh, so it does a real kind of split screen. And I just, I don't know why more cars aren't doing this. I have this massive... Uh, like double high screen in my uh, in my truck, and I can't really do like a real split screen like this is doing. I don't know why it's not doing. I actually, the the RAM with the big screen I think does do it. Uh, if you have the RAM with the double high screen, I think it does do a split screen. But um, yeah, because I'm I'm not knowing what you're talking about because mine does do. The yeah, yours does it. Yeah, it was one of. The that's all that I know of the CarPlay. I know CarPlay sucks overall. I think, <laughs> but, you know, my impression of this is, uh, hey, it's the future, number one. Number two, uh, less mechanical, uh, less moving parts, less area needed. So they'll take advantage of the ability to, you know, be one with the outdoors and liken it back to the 50s when you had huge glass in front of you and you, it was like a display case. Yeah. Which I think is cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is cool. Um, anyway, they're doing some interesting things with it. Now, overall, uh, it's a it's a great exterior design, beautiful interior design. Um, it's quiet. It seems even more comfortable than before. It has a much smoother, nicer suspension before. Uh, so it rides well, and the luxury is there. Like, where whereas, you know, Cadillac does well, but they seem to have, leaned into the performance side of thing. Lincoln is really trying to go more into the luxury side of things. And what's interesting is it has like, like a spa mode. So if you're sitting in the car and you're waiting for somebody or something for a minute, you can, it'll do the sound and the ambient lighting and the massaging seats. It goes into a full spa mode, which is actually uh, kind of interesting. It's kind of a cool piece. Um, now you can't do that while you're driving, but you can do the massaging seats and stuff while you are driving. So if you're if you like that, you can um, you can get into that. Uh, the one that I'm driving is the hybrid. It's not a plug-in hybrid. It's got a four-cylinder with two electric motors. The combined output is about 310 horsepower. Um, it it seems like it's fast enough. It, I, I I don't know that the specs are out on it. It feels like it's a mid five seconds, maybe high five seconds, zero to sixty range. Uh, uh, you know, uh, on that, um, it's it's comfortable and pretty seamless between switching from gas engine to electric mode. It doesn't shake the vehicle and jar it every time it fires up the gas engine. So it's pretty seamless and it works well. And up on that big screen, each time I drive it, I can get a gauge that tells me um, how much, like if I drove four miles on the way here, it'll tell me, Oh, I did three miles of gas and one point something miles of, of on electric. So it kind of breaks it down for you. And uh, Lincoln says it'll do 
30 miles per gallon. And um, my short commute was getting about 26. And then I drove around town a little bit further, but in stop and go in traffic. And I got 30 out of it. So it's, it, they're, they're, so far it seems pretty, pretty accurate. So um, anyway, Lincoln Nautilus, uh, it's nice if you guys are looking for an alternative in the, in the luxury uh, SUV range. It has stiff competition, Genesis, and then certainly when you step up to like BMWs and Audis, um, it starts in the mid fifties and goes up to about 80,000 when you get the full black label, you know, blackout trim and, and all of the options on it. Uh, Is that a full size? So no, so uh, above this would be the Aviator, which gets you into three rows, and then the Navigator would be even bigger than that. So um, uh, this probably would compete with like an X3, like a three series SUV that the uh, around the, that so size. People your size. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, now, one thing that they did is because Lincoln wanted to make it more comfortable is the in the back in the hatch area, it's a little bit smaller because they gave you more leg room for the rear seat passenger. So uh, they just a decision that needed to make. Do we want more room in the back or do we want more leg room, in, you know, it, for the passengers? And they went with leg room and it's actually very, very comfortable. So uh, it's got uh, air fresheners. It's got scents. There's three cartridges you can load into it and it'll, it, 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 I, couldn't find a scent that I liked. I ended up turning it off. Everything to me just, I don't know. I just got into it and I was like, who's wearing Axe body spray? Like what's going on in here? But uh, it's an interesting feature and they're not the first co company to do it. I think a couple of others do it. I think BMW was doing it like on a seven series, but um, you know, to me, it just seems like it's another thing. They're just going to try to sell you these cartridges all the time. If you wanted to smell good but listen i don't know if you've got a bunch of smelly kids in the back or a wet dog or something then maybe you do want maybe it you, man. Never know. <laughs> maybe you do want it but uh anyway that's it lincoln nautilus um yeah what else is going on uh, did we I've cover everything? Lincoln, man. lincoln lincoln's always done well uh it's a I, nice I, cross between i i thought they've always done a nice cross between luxury and performance so I agree. I, I like the Lincoln team um, have got to spend time with the designers and some of the engineers and, and, and kind of talk about the whole motivation behind, you know, the brand and the future of the brand and, you know, stuff that you're seeing now versus stuff that they're designing for five years from now. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, like Adam Carolla had a Lincoln aviator um, and uh, nice, but uh, the, the quality wasn't quite there. And this feels like a significant upgrade as far as the build quality, just Adam's car was just very, very nice, but just, it just seemed like over time things that shouldn't little things that shouldn't break window switches were falling off the front sensor for the thing, which was not working, you know, for the, um, for the, uh, uh, cruise control and just a few things like that just weren't there. And admittedly, Ford as overall, um, Jim Farley is like, we need to improve quality across the board. This seems like a nice step in that direction. It feels solid. It feels well built. It feels comfortable. Um, and yeah, there's some history with the Lincoln brand that I, I still think we all appreciate, you know, at least some of us. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it. Lincoln Nautilus. Check that out. Um, yeah, listen, I I think we're good. I'm gonna wrap it up. I gotta do uh I gotta do a little more work mounting uh wheels and tires on the thing. You know, I put the new wheels on and I found a little bit of a wobble in the rear. And I realized the lug nuts are a little short. It they're the lug nuts are bottoming out and not screwing. And I was like, oh I'm glad I noticed that and didn't didn't ride in there. I would have been pissed. I would have called the wheel and tire guy. Like you, you're mounting, you're balancing or shit. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I would have been so mad at that guy. And I, I would have felt bad because, uh, but it's good to look at these things ahead of time. It's like, just, I just need a little bit longer lug nut and then it'll be, be fixed. But yeah. And it's also good to go through things that have been sitting for a while because you mentioned the word wobble and, the thing that comes to my mind is death wobble because the, the yeah. wheelie as Gage was driving it yesterday, 
uh, and we weren't wearing our seatbelts because we were on the property and I wanted to be able to eject if he flipped us. Um, <laughs> yeah, death wobble in front, man. And it, we've got distance between the, yeah, the ax is fucked up. <laughs> it's, I'm glad we address, we, I've got to address it today. So, yeah. Glad yeah, the picture you uh you sent me, I, I put it up in the um uh you I think you ended up putting it up on Instagram anyway, so I added it to the YouTube video up there. Uh yeah, cool little piece. Oh, yeah. It's I think oh. um, anyway, cool All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna get back to work. Uh we'll see you guys next week. Until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. <laughs>